I've been a Plex user for years now, and I imagine many of you are as well. If not, maybe you use MB. And I started tinkering around with Jellyfin about a year ago, and then I found myself using it more and more. And then as more and more features were added to Jellyfin, I just eventually completely stopped using Plex, and I never really got into MB. Plex was my choice between the two. So I'm now exclusively using Jellyfin to sling media into my eyeballs. And I want to talk about why and I want to help you get set up with Jellyfin. Before we get started, let's head over to WhoKeys and unlock our copy of Windows. By using coupon code TS25, you can get 25% off these prices here. I use Windows 10 Pro. You can also get Windows 10 Home, and both of these will upgrade to Windows 11. You can get that. Also, note that the Windows 10 keys have been working with Windows 11. Google it and make sure that this is still a thing whenever you're purchasing your key. Also, I wanna note that if you get Windows 10 Home and you upgrade it to Windows 11, they will force you to use an online account. With Windows 11 Pro, however, you can use a local account, just so you know. You can also get Office 2019 with that same discount, or if you like, you can get Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 in a bundle and save even more. So go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code, hit it apply, and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for 14.85. Once you're finished, if you wanna access your key, you click on your name on the top, right click on user center and you'll see my purchase orders right here you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on view keys and codes then you will see your code right here just go ahead and copy this code press start type activate and you'll see activation settings come up click on that then click change product key right there you can paste in your code and hit next and then you will be activated it's very simple so don't pay those retail prices for your copy of windows or office head over to whokeys.com and use coupon code ts25 so one of the things that got me started was, you know, some of the stuff I wanted to do with Plex, like download media remotely, was locked behind a paywall. And I, you know, I don't like paywalls. So you come up here, we've got, you know, it's features, all these things for pros. If you want like their, some of their premium apps, well, you gotta pay for it. The same thing with MB, $54 a year, which if you're using this all the time, it's probably a better deal than like Netflix. You can still host your own media, but that's, you know, if you want access to offline media, hardware transcoding and all that kind of stuff. But then we have Jellyfin, which I find works really, really well. It offers all of that stuff and it does it for free. The only thing we have here is a contribute button. So if you want to contribute to the project, you can. Otherwise, you can use all of its functionality, which is vast, for free. And this is something that people think is kind of silly to talk about. I like this interface better. I think it looks better. It's cooler, you know, it's definitely cooler looking. This, this interface is great. I, I think it's better looking than Plex and, and MB. You know what, if you're happy on Plex and you're just using it in your house and you're not using it on your mobile devices and you don't need to download it or anything, you, you're just fine with the free version, Joker, by all means, go ahead and, and use it that way. I mentioned you because we were talking online and I said I like Jellyfin, so yes. So I was gonna show you how to do all the installation and everything, but there's plenty of tutorials online. You need to download a client, but you also need to download the server. So when you first get here, click on downloads and we can grab the media server and we have it for all different versions, Docker and stuff. Or if you have a NAS, you can just hop into your NAS uh, and check the applications panel and see if you have a version there you can download. So pick your flavor and then install uh, this as a server. Next up, you'll need a client. So you can download this for any of your devices. If you're on Android, you can just go into your app store or whatever and find Jellyfin there. All the way down at the bottom are the desktop versions. I really like the Jellyfin Media Player. It's pretty. Uh, Jellyfin MPV Shim is something you might want to download as well because it gives you more control over the transcoding or the lack of transcoding that you can have, uh, hardware acceleration and that kind of stuff. It runs in the background. For most people, download this. If you want more control, you can also download this and just let it run in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on GitHub and then get that. Over here is the release and then just grab your flavor and I won't insult your intelligence by telling you how to install it. I will say that when you're installing this on your NAS, make sure you don't just click next 20 times. You wanna look at each page and see if they're giving you any instructions. Sometimes they say, hey, you need to set up a user with permissions to view your library and the user's name must be Jellyfin. So just make sure you, you look at that before you click next, 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 next. And then after that, we will be able to log in. Now on your first login, it's gonna ask you to put in the IP address and create a name and password. Just go through all of that. And then your client will open up 
and ask you to add some libraries. To uh, click the plus button to add a new library, you have to pick the content type. Now, movies and shows have different metadata uh, information. So make sure you pick the correct content type. And it's also really advisable to have all this stuff separated on your hard drive. So for each library that you want, you're gonna want a separate folder on your hard drive because once I say like, okay, I wanna do music, well, you're gonna have to add a folder that corresponds specifically to this. And you can break it down as much as you want. Like if you wanna do, you know, you can just scroll down and be like, where's that folder? Oh, there it is. It's also really cool if you wanted to add the uh, direct network location. You can do that right here if you know what that is. Now you can see here we have some metadata downloaders. How did I get all these? We're gonna cancel out and I'll show you that. All right, we're gonna continue to look through just our settings here. And I wanna kinda skip over most of this and go down to the special stuff. That's the plugin section. Now the plugin section, we have a catalog where we can download new functionality and add it to our device. You can see here, we've got all this kind of cool stuff. I've added a bunch of stuff to mine. Mine's gonna show more than yours is. And that's because I've added more sources for the plugins by adding some repositories here. So I'll put a link in the description. Someone on Reddit was really nice and they made a list of all the repositories that they could find and then what stuff you could get from them. So, you know, just scroll through here and see if there's a plugin that you think you really like. And then you can just copy this URL. Then we just go over here to our repositories, plus, and then drop the URL there. You can name it whatever it was, you know, whatever you had it named, you can name it whatever. And once you add it, it'll show up here and then all of those plugins will show up in the catalog. So which ones do I recommend? Well, it all depends on what you want to do with your device. I, I do watch anime, so anime uh, DB or Anna DB, I really enjoy. Um, you can add a few of these, so that's what I've done. Uh, I've added Anna DB and a list and a few others. I highly recommend open subtitles. You'll need an account for that, but it's pretty easy to set up. And uh, you go through here and just find out what else you need. Now, after you're done, grabbing your plugins, the different metadata plugins or whatever, go over to my plugins and just make sure they don't need anything. So I'm gonna click on fan art, got a personal API key that we can use for the fan art, but it's okay as long as we're not downloading too much at one time. Now for open subtitles, when you click on that one, you need a name and a password and an API key. It's really easy, just create an account on open subtitles by clicking here. And then once you're done, you click here to create your API key. You can name your API key anything you like. So it's very easy. I don't need to walk you through that. And as you can see, I have the anime plugin that comes with it. It covers uh, AnnaDB and a couple other things. So that's all we need there. So this is what I use. Don't need too much. This is the open movie database. Now let's go back to our homepage. Now that we've got our library set up, now we've got like our different categories here. And I've just put some custom images there by clicking on the dot, 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 and you can edit images. So we've got that one there. Um, you can add more images. You could download your own, and you push plus, you can drag and drop your own images. So if you wanted to make a separate image for your movies category versus your anime movies category or whatever, you can do that. So that's how you change the images for your, uh, your media. Okay, so you can't edit things from right here. You have to click here, go to your dashboard, then go to your libraries, then you can edit stuff. So from here, I can actually manage library. Now, once you're managing your library, that's when we can do some cool stuff like add and subtract metadata downloaders. So you can change that behavior. And then towards the bottom here, uh, you can check your subtitles. Now I have mine downloading subtitles in English. Where are the damn things? Make sure you got, um, there we go. I wanna select English. And then for open subtitles, I always check mark this. I tell it to skip downloading subtitles if they're already available. And I would, it, it comes unchecked. I would recommend check marking this because if you already have subtitles that are embedded, you probably don't need to be downloading extra subtitles, but that's how I've got that set up. And then when you look at like, just like my movies, Got to manage library on my movies. For that metadata, I don't look at the analyst or the AnnaDB. That's just going to waste time. And those movies, like my regular films that are not animated, they're not going to be there. So I'm just using the movie database and open movie database. And then I'm also going to use some stuff in here. I use fan art, which has some really cool artwork and stuff. And then I do the same thing for subtitles. Tell it to skip if it already is, you know, already contains it. Now let's show you how we do the artwork here. If you have like some shows and the artwork's not working or whatever, 
Well, there's a few things we can do. Let's see if we can find something without artwork. Okay, so everything's wicked. What is this? This is all wrong. Wicked City. This is, uh, I don't know anything about this movie. So what we can do is you click the little dot, dot, dot. You can click it here, or you can even click it from this page. Click on the dot, 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 and click on Edit Metadata. Wicked City. So now, I, you know, I need to find this online so we can fix this. It's got the wrong information here from the movie databases. So one of the cool things here that we can do is just go to IMDb. I'm just going to look for Wicked City. That's what I'm looking for, the 1987 anime. There it is. So this is the information I want. See this number up here? Just grab that, and then we're going to put that here. See? I'm going to get rid of that. It'll, it'll automatically fill in the movie database. I also want to get the AnnaDB, so let's let's find that one. AnnaDB here. I'm going to search for oops, Wicked City. That's it right there, Wicked City. I'm also going to grab this number up here. 1040. So I'm just going to do a couple. You don't have to do them all. You can do, I mean, you can if you wanted to fill them all in, but sometimes it'll automatically fill it in. Now I'm going to save these changes. I've changed the movie. It's updating on its own. It hasn't updated yet, so what we're going to do is click on the dot, dot, dot again. Go to Refresh Metadata. Click on Replace Existing Images, and then click Refresh. Give it a second. If I click in here, it'll start doing stuff. It's not doing it yet. Come on. It's confused right now. Just have to give it a second. There we go. Just took it a second, then it found all that stuff. Um, if you really want to get crazy, you can go through and actually add in the images and stuff for these individual actors. So that one's good. Got the artwork there. It's ready to go. Now let's say we wanted to change the artwork on one of our uh, movies or whatever. Well, we can do that. Let's. Uh, see here. Which one do we want to change? How about Ninja Scroll? Let's get some different artwork for that one. There, I, I like that one. That's pretty, but let's see what else we've got available. If you just click, well, you can click here or anywhere else and just click on Edit Images. All right, we've got our primary and our backdrop. Let's click on this. It'll search our different sources. We've got the fan art. Looks pretty good. Uh, creepy Snake Lady. What do we got? Which one looks good? You know, I like the one we already have, but this one's pretty cool. Let's see how it looks. When you click on it, it'll show you what we got. That one's pretty, I like that. Yeah, let's let's just use it for the sake of the video. So you just click here on the little cloud, it downloads it, and uh, the backdrop's fine, it's whatever. And then just give it a second and that will show up there. I have to, sometimes you have to go back out and then go back in and it'll update. Cool. All right, so that's uh, pretty easy. That's how I've got everything all set up here. I guess I love this artwork, it's beautiful. You can sometimes, depending on the anime, there'll be lots of artwork available. Not just backdrop, there'll also be like logos and stuff. Let's see here. Let's go to some of the shows here and see if we can find anything. Lotus War. Edit images. We've even got a logo for this one because it's available. So we can look for logos. We've got logos from fan art. I like, I like the, this one. Yeah, I like just the, the simple one. It, it's even though this is very pretty let's just we could we can switch it back and forth you know there we go and the primary artwork looks good the backdrops fine i guess cool so that's what we've got and you can get very nerdy with this while we're here let me just recommend an old sci-fi show there that's all i'm gonna say it doesn't over explain itself either which is something that i love I can't stand when all the hollywood people are like we must explain in detail every little thing and we can't just accept that this is a different world. So that's pretty cool. Before I leave, I do want to mention that we do have some client settings here. I think for the client, I'm going to do OpenGL just to give it a little boost in case it needs it. I like to set my um, tiny or small, depending, but I like to set my subtitles center, bottom, and then you can set them anywhere you like. Make them huge if you want to. I don't care if it takes up the whole screen. You can do whatever you want. So anyway, that's how I have my Jellyfin set up. So I think I'm going to go and uh, watch some content. Let me know what you think, and uh, if you have some questions in the comments, place them, or just do it on the forum. If you can't figure out how to get something installed, then uh, I can help over there much better because I can write a lot more than I can on YouTube or whatever. So anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Let me know if you're using this. Let me know what your favorite plugins are as well. I'm very curious, especially the metadata plugins and all that. So let me know which ones you like, and we'll talk about it. Goodbye.